All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, happy Earth Day. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as you know, this is hosted by Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, my name is Jesslyn Benson. I work here as a biological technician, and um, we're just very happy to have you and share with you some of the great things that the local business community is doing here in Southern Maine and a little bit about our partnership with um, businesses that we have going on as part of our 50th anniversary celebration. Um, so before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping things. You can turn on closed captions for the event by clicking on the closed captions button in the bottom corner of your of the right hand corner of your screen. Um, if you have any questions at all throughout the presentation, feel free to um, use the Q&A box at the top of your screen to um, send in any questions publicly or privately. Um, and we'll be using the chat a little bit as well. So feel free to enter those at any time and we'll get to those um, at the end of each presentation and then we'll have another little Q&A at the end. So just to, so you're aware, uh, this live event is recorded and will be made publicly available on the Friends of Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge website in a few days. Um, so with that, let's get this Earth Day party started. Um, so we're here to talk to you about um, collaborative conservation with the local business community, as I've told you. Um, and so part, a lot of that is what we're calling Rachel Carson's Conservation Champions, businesses for, uh, businesses for a greener future. And part of that, part of the reason we developed this was because of our 50th anniversary um, celebration here at Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge, um, in which we've been hosting other events and doing things like a sense of wonder art contest um, a sense of wonder in the field blog and a special label partnership with tributary brewing company just to name a few so we're really excited about this project um, and here to talk about it is rachel stearns from rachel carson national wildlife refuge uh, we have karina grader from the southern maine planning and development commission uh, we have and then we have two of our conservation champions Jen Armstrong from JAK Designs and Planeteers of Southern Maine, and Sam Bodak from Earthship Global. <clears throat> so here to start us off is Rachel Stearns. She is a salt marsh biological technician at Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge in Wells, Maine. She works with regional salt marsh biologists in restoring salt marsh habitats using innovative techniques, and she is spearheading Rachel Carson's Conservation Champions, Businesses for a Greener Future. Um, she earned her bachelor's degree in environmental science and oceanography from the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, and her master's degree in biological and environmental sciences from the University of Rhode Island. Rachel, take it away. Just make, make sure to unmute yourself. Still muted. Just bear with us here for a moment while we figure out the technology situation here. There, can everyone hear there me? There you go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right, well, now let's kill another minute. Um, happy Earth Day, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is the third time I've said that. Um, I'm glad you're finally hearing it, though. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about a new program that we just started at the Refuge this past uh, few months called Rachel Carson's Conservation Champions, Businesses for a Greener Future. Um, and as Jess mentioned a little bit ago, this is um, a program that we started um, in support of our 50th anniversary celebrations. <clears throat> so the goal of this is to inspire at least 50 southern Maine, um, coastal southern Maine businesses to implement at least one environmentally 
sustainable action of their choice um, at their business within a one year time frame of after signing up. Um, but I will say if you're tuning in from New Hampshire or Northern Maine, you know, you're in your business owner, you're not excluded from this. We are welcoming everyone to participate. Um, the more minds that come together, the better. Um, so the overall mission of this, and this is our mission statement, uh, which is up on um, our Conservation Champions website. Um, the link to that is at the bottom of the presentation. But the mission of, of this program is to uh, work with local businesses to help increase public awareness um, of environmentally sustainable practices um, within our community. Um, and by doing so, providing everyday people with tools and knowledge that they might have not had before or resources they might not have had before um, to take small steps towards you know, making changes that can lead towards a more environmentally sustainable lifestyle. Um, so different things that we're, we do in this program, um, this is, and quickly I'll just say this is a, a logo that we've partnered with a local artist, Katie Conroy, to design for the program. So businesses that sign up to be, become a conservation champion can have this posted at their business, um, and anyone that patronizes the, those businesses can recognize them as a, a champion. Um, other things that the refuge is doing for champions is just providing resources to them. Um, if you're interested in signing up, but you don't really know what, what you want to do, we can help brainstorm environmental action ideas for you. Um, and then we're also going to create a Facebook group where the champions um, can join and come together, swap ideas, um, you know, brainstorm ideas, talk about what's working for them, what's not working for them. Um, and then provide presentations to champions and give more resources to them too. So <clears throat> even though part of this conversation that we're having tonight is about, you know, working with the local business community, some of the environmental actions that we provide to businesses as examples of things that they could incorporate into their business are also things that you can do, individuals can do at home. Um, some of these things are, you know, things you already know about, um, like opting out of plastic straws, uh, using reusable grocery bags, using eco-friendly cleaning products, um, composting at home. And some things you might not know about, like local composting programs that will pick up compost uh, curbside. And the um, Natural Resources Commission of Maine has on their website a nice list of different businesses in the Southern Maine area that provide um, these pickup services. So I encourage you to check that out if that's something you're interested in. Um, other things that you can do that you might have not been aware of before um, is doing stuff like planting native flowering plants for pollinators. Um, Perhaps if you compost, you know, the compost can go towards helping create more of that native habitat. Um, especially um, plants like milkweed needed um, by the monarch caterpillars. Um, something else you could do is mow with monarchs in mind to promote milk, milkweed growth um, and not mowing when monarch eggs or caterpillars are present on milkweed in your yard or at your business. <clears throat> Oh, um, you could establish annual or regularly scheduled invasive plant species cleanup days, um, whether that's around your yard at home or around your business, um, and do something like take part in no mow May, where you just don't mow your yard for the month of May, um, which helps provide food that um, early emerging pollinators need after the winter time. And if you're ready to go, um, you know, take big steps, big leaps forward. Um, you could do something like partake in an all-employee volunteer day. Um, if you're not a business owner, you could advocate this to your, um, advocate this idea to your boss. Um, doesn't hurt to ask. You could source local farms or companies for food and drink options. Um, and if you decide to, you know, do schedule, regularly scheduled invasive plant species cleanup days, Perhaps you could um, get to cooking those items in your own kitchen. Um, different species like the green, green uh, 
crab, garlic mustard, or Japanese knotweed. Um, there's recipes you can look up online to do that. The picture here shows um, garlic mustard pesto, which is pretty delicious. I've had it before. Um, and one last big example we always give is investing in energy efficiency. And Karina from the Southern Maine Planning um, Commission is going to talk about that in detail next. So I won't go into detail here. Um, but if anyone has any questions about this stuff, um, we're doing a Q&A at the end, so feel free to ask anything. Um, or we can provide you know, more resources about specific actions you can do um, you know, to reach these goals. And you can email me um, at rachel underscore sterns at fws.gov. Thanks so much, and I'll pass it over to Karina. Great, thanks, Rachel. Let me just share my screen really quick. And while she's doing that, let me just say, um, Karina Grader is the Sustainability Coordinator with Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission, which is a regional nonprofit that supports municipalities and businesses in Southern Maine. Um, so Karina works collaboratively with coastal towns to develop re regional sustainability efforts and support local climate action. And so as you've heard, she'll be talking about energy efficiency in small businesses. Great, thanks, Jesslyn. Yeah, so as Rachel mentioned, um, energy efficiency is a really great uh, area of action for businesses interested in becoming a Rachel Carson conservation champion. Um, there's a lot of easy first steps that towns can, uh, businesses can take. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit about why energy efficiency is important, um, some steps that you can take to increase energy efficiency in your business, and also an opportunity, a new opportunity we have here at Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission. Uh, for businesses who are interested in taking a little bit of a bigger action. So just to start off, as Jesslyn was saying, I work for the Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission. If you haven't heard of us before, it's because we work a lot with municipalities. Um, we have 39 member municipalities in uh, York County and Southern Oxford County, shown here on this map. Um, but we also do a fair amount of economic development uh, work. We have a successful Brownfields program to help remediate uh, contaminated sites. And we also have been assisting a lot with um, the business economic relief happening during COVID. Um, so we have worked primarily with uh, municipalities on our sustainability and climate action work, but we're trying to expand that more to outreach and education to community members as well as the businesses in our communities. So back to energy efficiency, um, what is it? You know, we talk about it a lot, but it simply just means using less energy to perform the same task. So eliminating any, eliminating any energy waste from the things you're doing. And when we think about it, we think about lighting or uh, insulating of your building, um, you know, really trying to optimize the energy you're using so that you're not spending more money and wasting more energy than you need to to accomplish your goals. So why does energy efficiency matter? Well, as it's Earth Day, really one of the most important reasons is that uh, energy efficiency reduces environmental impacts. So a lot of the energy that we use is reliant on fossil fuels like coal or natural gas or uh, fuel oil. And so when you switch to more environmentally friendly fuels or you start using less of those fuels, you're reducing greenhouse gas emissions, which is better for the planet. It is also better for your business's bottom line. So um, we all know that energy costs a lot of money, electricity and fuel oil. Um, so when you use less of it, you're reducing your operating costs and your utility bills. And you're also improving your business's location by updating heating systems or making the property just overall more valuable. So there's a couple of ways that energy efficiency can increase your business's profits. And then the last reason why energy efficiency matters is because environmental sustainability is a great way to promote your business. Um, so 
by trying to show that your business cares about the environment and you care about the energy you use, you're enhancing the marketability of your products and services, your brand image, and uh, it's especially important with the growing segment of environmentally conscious customers. So that could be anything from, you know, a company like name beer company making huge commitments to sustainability and reducing energy use, or it could be doing smaller actions and promoting your business through things like the Rachel Carson Conservation Champions program. So what can you do to increase your business's energy efficiency? Um, there are a few low cost actions that are easy for everyone to implement. Um, the first is to take your building and weatherize it. So improve the insulation of your building and you can do that by you know, sealing leaks around windows, making sure your windows aren't too drafty and maybe updating them if necessary or adding insulation throughout your building like in the attic or in the walls to prevent air from leaking. Another low cost energy efficiency action is to improve the lighting in your building. So that's both switching to uh, LEDs that use a lot less energy than traditional lighting, but it's also sort of um, the occupational aspects of lighting, like making sure they're turned off when not in use or not having more lighting than is necessary in a given area. And then finally, another low cost energy efficiency action is to um, improve your heating and cooling uh, use. So not necessarily saying you need to go and get a new HVAC system, but maybe installing programmable thermostats that apply limits to what temperature your building could be and also are adjustable to turn down the temperature or turn down the cooling when the building is unoccupied um, because that energy isn't providing any sort of real use to you and your customers. So if you're looking for how to get started with all of this, if those actions sound great, but either your business wants to do more or you want more direction, um, I'm happy to share that we at SMPDC have just started today a new energy audit program. Um, so this is a program that we are starting with grant funding from the US Department of Agriculture. They have a Rural Energy for America program and they have given us a grant to provide low cost energy audits to small businesses and agricultural producers in southern Maine. And so when I say low cost, I mean that the energy audits will be subsidized so that the businesses only have to pay 25% of the cost of the audit and the grant will fund the 75% of the rest of the cost. So this is a program specifically for uh, made for for-profit businesses within our region. So it includes the coastal towns, but also any other town in southern Maine. And it's just for small businesses. So as defined by the Small Business Administration or else agricultural producers, farmers in the area of any size. And so what an energy audit is in a little more detail is it's a comprehensive facility and energy review that analyzes all aspects of a building energy use. So that includes space heating and cooling, your lighting systems, any other power systems you might have like machinery, um, the plug loads that your building is having drawn and also the envelope. So like that weatherization, what's in the walls and the ceilings and the windows. Um, and so the audit will have a report that provides a clear breakdown of how, when, and where your electricity is being used. And from that, it will provide recommended energy efficiency measures that you could use to maximize your long-term cost savings and minimize your energy consumption. And the audit will also include um, resources for who could complete those uh, updates, how much those updates would cost, and also some financial resources that you could use to help fund those updates. So I know that was a lot of stuff, but I hope it inspires you to take some action on energy efficiency. It's really a great action to do for the Conservation Champions Program. Um, if you'd like to learn more about our energy audit program, as I mentioned, it's brand new. So you can either email me at kgrader at smpdc.org or we will be creating a web page on our website um, and we will be sharing that through the Conservation Champions program. So it will be on their friends website as well. There's also a lot of information and financial resources available for both businesses and homeowners interested in energy efficiency improvements. Um, for businesses, Efficiency Maine uh, offers cash incentives 
um, they have specific gig incentives for different types of upgrades. So lighting or installing a new heating system or even improving um, your water systems. And those are all available on Efficiency Maine's website. And I believe Jessalyn will be sharing these links with you after the program. Um, but also if you have a unique project, Efficiency Maine also does a custom program where you reach out to them with your energy efficiency needs and they help you figure out how to fund that upgrade in your facility. And then finally, the USDA also offers um, energy efficiency improvement uh, loans and grants to businesses that qualify for larger projects that need funding. There are also a bunch of resources and information for homeowners also on Efficiency Maine's website. Um, as well as for renters. So I'd recommend anyone who's interested in learning more about this um, to check out these links that we can share later on and um, reach out to me again if you have any questions. So thanks so much and I will pass it on to the next presenter. Unless my computer freezes. Okay. Thank you so much, Karina. Um, okay, yeah, so if anybody wants to follow up with Karina, please feel free to do so. There's a lot of great resources that her and her organization can provide small business owners, um, as well as just individuals who want to make a difference in that way as well. Um, so let me just check if we have any questions. I'd be happy to address those at, right now. Um, otherwise, so I will be, there we go. So we're just going to move right into um, some of our conservation champions. First up, we have Sam Bodock. I'll get that live to you in just a second. So first up, we have Sam Bodock, who is from Earthship Global. Um, he's an account manager and operations coordinator. He uses his strong business acumen to facilitate business-to-business -business relationships with Earthshift Global's clients and partners, as well as coordinate operational efforts within the company. So working with his team, Sam works to identify new ways Earthshift Global can serve its clients. He earned a Bachelor of Science in Management and Finance from Plymouth State University and a Master's in Business Administration in Sustainability from Antioch University, New England. Sam? Thank you, Jessalyn. Thank you, Rachel, uh, for inviting me to be part of this conversation. Uh, and thank you, Karina, for the work that you're doing as well. Um, I think this is a, a great conversation to have uh, and a great dialogue to open up. Um, I don't see this as the end of the um, discussion. I, th I see this as a continuation or beginning of, of the discussion. Uh, so for everybody's knowledge because not a lot of people in Maine know, to, but know about Earthshift Global and, and what kind of an organization we are. Uh, we are a service-based organization. So we're primarily a consultancy. Uh, we help companies to look at the environmental impacts of their, of their products using life cycle assessment primarily. And life cycle assessment in a nutshell is uh, looking at uh, taking a given product, say this mug or a cup, uh, a, a be beverage vessel, uh, and understanding at the raw material sourcing to the production of this cup, to the use of this cup, all the way to the disposal of this cup, what uh, what are the environmental impacts of it? What are the greenhouse gas impacts of, of creating this cup and using this cup? What are the water impacts, electricity impacts, um, all sorts of um, different things. So we work with clients all over the globe um, and in lots of different industries um, every day and every project is a new adventure for sure. Um, as far as what I want to talk about, uh, you know, I can tell you a bunch of different stories about some of the projects that we've been involved in, but I just want to kind of reflect on um, our the beginning, beginning, beginnings of our personal reflection and, and journey uh, and talk about some of the things that we've been working on internally and then maybe share a few ideas on how you know businesses can uh, help themselves and help um, to be more su sustainable themselves. Um, so as a sustainability consultancy, it, there's certain things that we've always done. I've been with the company for five years. 
the organization's been around for 21 though. Uh, our founder, Lisa Lauren, our founder, CEO, Lisa Lauren, is, um, has been leaving the charge and not only working with our clients, but begin trying to make us more sustainable as an organization. Um, but there's little things we've kind of done um, as we went along and policies that I was learning as I as I learned the ropes of, of my position and also of the company. Um, but it, the majority of our work is is focused on you know working with clients to help them figure out how they're more sustainable and, and not to make a, a the, the the full uh, comparison or use use the exact metaphor, but there's a there's an old saying about the shoemaker's child child who has uh, um, holes in their shoes. Um, you know sometimes you don't always uh, take that uh, you're you're so busy doing the work for others that you don't always take that critical eye towards yourself. Um, so we actually had the opportunity in 2017, 2018 um, to bring upon, um, bring on a group of local students from UNH to do what's called an or organizational life cycle assessment. So uh, effectively, the <laughs> the consultants were becoming the clients uh, in a way, uh, and these students did a, a wonderful job. They worked with us over the course of uh, six months, I believe worked with our CEO and a few others within the organization, asked us some really good questions. Uh, and it was an opportunity for them to learn how, about life cycle assessment and about organizational life cycle assessment. So I'm um, kind of zooming out from a product and looking at how, to, how a company interacts with the environment. Um, and they taught us some stuff. Um, we had been since about 2016, I believe, 2017. Um, we had been really, um, we've been composting all along and diverting waste as much as possible all along, but we hadn't really been tracking it. We started tracking it in 2016, late 2016, early 2017, um, to really understand by weight how much waste we're actually putting out there. And I was always impressed by the numbers that we, that we, you know, that we had. Uh, uh, reflecting back on those numbers, we had something like and only 9% of our total waste was going to the landfill. 46% um, of it by weight was going to compost. Um, and yours truly uh, was taking it home every day and putting it in a compost bin. 33% uh, was paper and junk mail that was uh, being recycled. Uh, and 12% was uh, cans, bottles, aluminum that we were able to just put in the recycling stream. Um, so that was all. It was all, you know, it all seemed like it was impressive. It seemed like it was, it was like we were making great strides. But what the OLCA taught us uh, was that, you know, that's all well and good, and those have positive ramifications. But transportation, and particularly tra employee transportation, because there was four of us uh, that were driving back and forth to our Kittery office at the time, um, was actually one of our greatest impacts. Um, so uh, that was good to reflect upon. Um, to, to help solve that and, and one of the practices we've had uh, all, all along or one of the procedures policies we've had all along was to um, anytime we were flying anywhere, uh, if possible, book a direct flight which uh, as somebody who travels to conferences is a welcome thing, uh, not having layovers, um, because the number, uh, the greatest amount of fuel is uh, in a plane flight is used during takeoff and landing. So the, the, the amount that you can reduce the number of takedown and takeoff and landing landings, the better, uh, or the greater you can reduce that. Um, and using public transit whenever we are traveling to as much as possible carpooling whenever possible as well. And something we talk to our clients about too, which also saves them money, is uh, meeting virtually. 95% of the time that we actually talk to clients, uh, we or that we engage with clients, we, we never actually hand, do a virtual handshake with them. Uh, you know, more often, it's more likely to actually see them at a conference than we are actually gonna see them on a given project. Um, so those are some of the ways that we've tried to, you know, walk the talk of sustainability, and not just um, show others, but also lead by example. Um, along came COVID, and our transportation issue uh, 
kind of got resolved. Uh, <laughs> nobody was traveling to the office. In fact, we have actually gotten rid of our physical office and everybody is 100% virtual now. Uh, so we'll have to do a refresh of our uh, <laughs> organizational life cycle assessment to see how uh, see how that changes things and what our next impact is that we can work on. What's our next hotspot? Uh, the next um, thing we can um, change uh, or improve upon. Um, so those are just a few of the ways in which uh, a few of the lessons that we've learned uh, and practices that we've implemented. Um, in terms of other practices that we've used and, and things that we're striving for and things that I would encourage others to, to consider. Um, it was mentioned earlier on, I think Rachel, when you were introducing uh, the, the conversation um, and the concept of these champions, uh, conservation champions, um, using invasive species. And we, whenever we host events, whether it's people in town, um, the clients in town or um, team meetings, um, holiday outings, whatever it may be. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, we try and support local restaurants and especially those that are trying to do something good for the planet too. Um, if you look, um, especially in the, I know we're, this is a, a main conversation, but I'm in a Hampshire, right? So I'm going to push, pull you over the border for a second in a Portsmouth. Um, Chef uh, Matt Lewis has been uh, one of the people who's been leading the charge in using invasive species. He has a, um, and two of his restaurants, I believe Moxie and one other one, uh, he actually uses green crab uh, in, a, uh, in, in his menu and at least one menu item. There might, I think there's a, a seafood um, chowder that he uses it in and there, there may be another um, menu item that he uses it in. Um, so supporting efforts like that um, may not necessarily be something you're doing directly, but you're supporting the efforts of others. Um, looking at the B Corp um, model is, is a great thing to do, even though you don't, even though, though an organization may not necessarily want to, want to become a B Corp. And for anybody's, uh, for everybody's education, B Corp simply stands for Benefit Corporation. Um, which is a business model for uh, folks to for for an organization to operate in. It's not a full for profit, not a full non profit. It's kind of in the middle. It um, it melds the two concepts together, uh, and just following the framework that the, the the B Corp framework and and going through the steps or the questionnaire that they have that. Um, makes you think about how your business operates can be an enlightening exercise um, to really consider how your business operates in the world. Um, and the third thing, and this is, is kind of a forthcoming blog post coming uh, from my CEO, from my CEO and you know, possibly I might have some additions to it as well, is uh, you know, I, I kind of joked about how uh, COVID and the quarantine situation is, is reduce our transportation impacts. But on a serious note, you know, really considering uh, having, keeping some of the practices that we've implemented in um, the past year or so um, as ways to reduce our environmental impact and, and more so like on the personal front, you know, people were less likely to go to the grocery store uh, or they'd make fewer trips to the grocery store. Um, because they didn't want to be exposed. Well, by doing that, they're also reducing the amount of times that they're in the car and the amount of transportation emissions that they have. Um, so, it, it, you know, maybe taking stock of some of the little practices that we've um, engaged with over the over the past year, reducing and reusing, uh, I think has been part of that, um, both on the personal front and on the business front is, is a great way to um, really consider uh, ways in which we can um, further drive sustainability into our businesses and to and, and into our personal lives. And with that, I'd throw it back to Jessalyn and Rachel. Thanks so much, okay. Sam. It was so good to hear uh, from one of our champions. Um, Jocelyn, do you have any word from Jen, who uh, was supposed to join us tonight, but was having connectivity issues? Uh, we are currently working on getting her up. She should be up in a, in a couple minutes. So if anybody has a question in the meantime, feel free to, to go a little bit into the discussion right now. 
I've got a question for Karina if I'm allowed to ask it uh, just out loud here instead of typing it in. Uh, so on the topic of business sustainability, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I mentioned when I was talking um, and, and business efficiency uh, that we as an organization have gotten rid of our office entirely, um, our physical location, um, but we're headquartered out of Kittery, uh, out of um, our CEO has a home office. Does that fall underneath efficiency main uh, as far as people who we should talk to or should we be uh, talking to you as far as making her office more <laughs> more efficient? Just curious as, as to how you all, not necessarily tailoring it to us, but how you all are navigating that if that question has come up. That is funny. No, I, it has not come up, but that is great. Um, and like definitely something I'm sure efficiency main has not considered. Yeah, so Efficiency Maine is, for those who don't know, it's like a state level uh, funding organization that um, does a lot of funding of energy related initiatives. And really their big model is by providing rebates, financial incentives. Sometimes you have to apply for them beforehand and you get them later. Sometimes they're automatic on the product you're purchasing, like an LED light bulb. Um, but my understanding for a home office would be that anything that's happening in a building that is considered a home would fall under all of their home uh, incentives. So there are actually, in many cases, just as many, if not more, incentives available for homeowners as there are for businesses through Efficiency Main. Um, so say you want to put in a heat pump or do insulation or something like that, you would use the home rebates. But unless there are change, if they're uh, their decision on that has changed. I don't know if they've made a decision because I don't know if they've considered it, but that's really something interesting to think about. I think for our program, um, since we're funded through the US Department of Agriculture, they would not consider a home, a business that could qualify for one of our subsidized energy audits. Great, uh, so now I know who to direct Lisa, our boss to then. <laughs> Thanks for Definitely, clarifying. and they're, they're a great resource. Both Lay have a great website, and if anyone ever has questions, there are lots of folks you can contact there um, to ask your questions to, and they'll direct you to the right place. Great, thanks. I guess I'd also ask too, what is a typical engagement look like uh, when you're uh, when you're is, is there a typical engagement when you're when you're working with a business what does that um, look like do you mean for our energy audit program yes well it's just started today so we have not done any energy audits yet <laughs> you mentioned that sorry um yeah it's okay but basically how it will work is say you know, a business reaches out to us like a restaurant. Um, we make sure they meet the qualification criteria. Then we get some background information about what they'd be interested in for an energy audit, what their facility is like, um, you know, what systems they're most interested in having evaluated if they have any goals to get out of the energy audit, like they really want to know how much upgrading all their lighting to LED would cost. And then we have a local energy auditing firm that we work with who will actually deliver the audit. We don't do it. We use um, folks who are certified for doing commercial energy audits that you know are very skilled. Um, so then we'll coordinate with them, get a quote for the price of the audit, and as once that we have that, the if the business agrees to it, then we'll set up the audit um, with the energy auditor and with the business, and they'll be the ones who go there and complete it. Um, and after the audit's complete, there will be a report that we'll go through with the business to make sure they understand it, make sure they understand next steps, and that they're satisfied with the whole process. So that's what it will look like one day when we do it. Very cool. Hey Jess, any word from Jen? Hi, sorry about that. Um, she's signing in right now. Oh, great. Did you have a question, Rachel? Oh, uh, someone put something in the chat um, in the Q&A. It said, did everything stop? So it looks like other people might be having 
Mm -hmm. um, some computer issues. Yeah. That's the thing with the team. Sometimes it gets a little funky. I'm curious uh, while we're waiting on our other panelists, uh, if she's able to join. I'm curious how everybody got interested in sustainability and conservation in 30 seconds or less a piece. <laughs> sure, I'm, I'm happy to start. Um, sure. Uh, when I graduated college, I was an earth sciences major, and then I went to grad school to study climate change in Greenland. Um, I, I so I came from it from a background of really loving the science and loving climate science and thinking it was super interesting. Mm -hmm. I got to a point at the end of my master's degree where I was I felt like I was just studying the problem and not being part of the solution to it. Um, so it was after that that I decided to switch towards a field where I could actually try and work on climate action and sort of fell into the field of sustainability through a university program. So um, that's where I came from in hopefully 30 seconds. <laughs> um, I had the pretty much the same exact path. Um, uh, my background was studying sea level rise, um, using salt marsh sediments to make sea level uh, relative sea level reconstructions through time um, so that you know modelers can use that to project sea level rise into the future um, and I just sort of had the same similar feeling that you know I was just researching the problem and um, you know wasn't really doing a whole lot to help the issue um, and then I landed this job in conservation with the Fish and Wildlife Service um, and so I'm happy to share the, the word on this on Earth Day. Um, I feel like I've come full circle in all of that, so. No pun intended with Earth Day, full circle. Uh, no, nah, never mind, <laughs> terrible joke. <laughs> what about you, Just, Sam? Uh, so me, I, um, I grew up on uh, a chunk of land in the middle of the woods of Barrington, New Hampshire, and um, kind of uh, fell in love with nature that way. And just through school and trying to find that ideal job and not finding that ideal job uh, and wanting to do something meaningful and working a couple of years in the corporate world, um, I decided to go back and get an MBA in organizational sustainability. And that uh, opened my eyes a little bit more uh, towards the concept of business for good. Um, and fast forward, uh, let's see, four or five years after that and working a bunch of other fun, interesting, um, but not really career oriented jobs, uh, found my way to Earthship Global. Um, so that's been, um, yeah, it, it's been a, a, a great journey. I've been um i'm happy very fortunate to have the team that i have uh, a great group to work with and some smart folks so um yeah you know i think it, i think we're all kind of in a synergistic way uh, trying to do something do something um, better uh, for the for the planet yeah what about you jess <laughs> Um, well, I guess I've always been interested in conservation and nature in general, and um, I just, I really love the terrestrial habitats, but I really love marine as well, so that's where I kind of came, both kind of came together at Rachel Carson, um, and I just wanted to do something that, you know, would leave an impact on habitats and wildlife and um, be able to get my hands dirty and and feel like I'm making a, a difference every day, um, which is a real perk of my job, so. 
uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much for um, bearing with us through the technical difficulties. Our last presenter, Jen Armstrong of JAK Designs, uh, is not going to be able to make it um, tonight, but we will have, um, we will be ha hosting another event very similar to this and we'll be featuring her in that. So part two. Be sure to tune in. <laughs> what was that? I said part two. Yes, part two. <laughs> um, but that's that's what we get with with technology. It's great for some things, <laughs> not for others. But um, so if you all want to um, take the time, I'm pretty sure we don't have any more questions or comments coming through. So we're going to end it here. But thank you so much for joining us. And if you want to learn more about any of the programs that we talked about um, or the businesses and what they're doing, uh, feel free to get in contact with any one of us and I'll be posting um, all those links in the chat. And this recording will be uh, viewable on the Friends of Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge website. So with that, much, Jess. thank you and happy Earth Day to everybody. And thank you so much to our presenters. I learned a lot. <laughs> Thanks so much. Happy Earth Day. Thanks happy so Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.